Hey man, say man, we back at it again with another video and I got my homeboy. Ken. Where you from, Ken? Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff? Yes, okay, sir. yo, he from the hood, he from that way. I've been over there, it's dangerous over there. So look, I just got one question. We've been asking everybody, what's the purpose of life? Damn. <laughs> he said, dang. Uh, I say purpose in life is uh, to find something you're willing to die for. Willing live to like it, live like this, you know, every day is your last day. That's fine purpose. So YOLO. Basically. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I always ask that because what happens after you do that? Like after after you live your best life, then what's what's next? Retirement. Retirement. <laughs> oh god, yo. Okay. So look, and another reason why I asked this question, because I have I, well, I still got four million followers. I had all the Lambos, I had all the girls, I had all the sex, I had everything. I still feel empty. I tried to commit suicide because I didn't know what was the purpose of life. I had it all, right? So it's kind of like I had what everybody wanted and I felt empty. And then my time came to an end. I was having sex in the hotel with this nice looking girl and I died from a drug overdose. You smoke weed? Barely, rarely. You call me today, but rarely. Okay, what about edibles? No, sir. Okay, I died off an of edible. Uh, my body came out and then I went to hell. And what I seen was, it was crazy. I seen the demon. He said he'd been waiting on me. Everything was telepathy. I was dead for 15 hours. Um, I called on the name of Jesus. Jesus pulled me out. They fight for my soul. I went to hell five times. So I say this because you never know when you're going to die. Like, that's why I always say this on these videos. I just had sex. And then right after that, I died. That means I was living my best life, having sex, doing what I wanted, and then I died. So it's like if somebody was to spray this place up, it's kind of like how I died. You know what right. I'm saying? How your relationship with Jesus? I don't know. You don't know? That ain't a good thing. But now let me preach the gospel to you. You know about Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and all that, right? Yeah. Okay, so he was a perfect man. He, Jesus is God, but he came, God came down as a man because, you know, our blood was tainted with sin and we needed a creator. We needed somebody that was perfect. He had the perfect blood and he took upon every sin. So all the stuff we doing, I didn't cuss God out, I ain't gonna lie. But Jesus laid that all on the cross and God hates sin. He can't stand sin, but Jesus is God. And he took on every sin on the cross so that way we can have everlasting life and we can call on his name to get out of this mess we in. Why ain't you like giving your life to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Let me ask you that. Uh, I ain't gonna say I haven't, but like, you mean like recently? Or yeah, like, I, no, no, I put it like this. Let me say this better. Why haven't you been living for Jesus? Cause I could tell you why I wouldn't live for Jesus. I was, I was trying to make money. So let me ask you, why would, why would, why ain't you living for Jesus? You get caught up in the everyday hustle and bustle, you know. You just start living, like you said. Like age 13, bro. I really feel like it was a dramatic moment in your life, bro, where everything shifted, and actually you picked up a lot of anger. And I, I really feel like you struggle with a lot of anger, and you still, you know how to suppress it, you know how to deal with it, but like you, you're like, bro, don't sprawl off on me, cause like, I, you kind of black out. You know, does that relate to you? Uh, yeah, for a minute, yeah, working on that, but yeah. at a point in time, definitely, yeah. yeah so, so look, the, the Holy Spirit revealed that to me, and it was when you were 13, bro. I don't know if you, do you have any brothers, or like, how was your, was your father present? Yeah, he was, yeah, he was present. Yeah, he was present, but it was hard for you to emotionally connect with him. Fact, big facts. So this is, the Holy Spirit literally, he spoke to me about that because he wants to show you what a real father looks like, bro. Because sure. one thing about me, my dad was present, but my parents just got divorced, so he had to start life all over again. He was present, but not emotionally present. And it actually caused me to get into pornography. It caused me to go to drugs. It caused me to go to my friends and run the things in this world, bro. And I'm, I'm like, bro, this is crazy, bro. You were highlighted to me in that gas station. God wants to literally re-amend your heart, bro. I read your shirt, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So me, bro, I actually put a gun to my head and I heard his voice say, don't do it. And I, I seen him face to face. He has a crazy encounter. I do too. So like outside of the video and everything, bro, this is about your soul, bro. It's, it's going one or two places. And bro, I'm telling you, bro, for him, you never met me, bro. Right. Have you met me? No, sir. And isn't that crazy? I knew when you were 13, bro, it was a pivotal moment of your life, right? Yes, sir. 13. And this was literally, it literally changed the trajectory of you growing up. And you're still actually dealing with a lot of wounds right now. Right? To a degree, yeah. Working on them. Right I, for sure. And like, you've, don't keep me wrong, don't correct me if I'm wrong. You actually, you, you love to actually, okay, how do I explain this? You see yourself as a protector in your family. You, you naturally are protective, especially when it comes to your mom, when it comes to the, the females in your family, sure. right? Of course. So bro, God actually wants to use that because you're called to be a pastor, bro. Wow. You're, you're, you're called, you're, no, no, I'm so serious. A pastor's not a preacher. A pastor actually keeps the, the flock in line. And the pastor, what they do, they care for them. They care for their soul so much, so much that they protect them. 
That's why if you see in the, the Old Testament, David, he, was a, he tended the sheep. He protected them. He even defeated a bear and a lion because the bear and the lion were trying to kill the sheep. But he literally killed the bear and the lion, bro. The, bro you're literally called to, 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 to protect people for the kingdom. Ain't that crazy, bro? That is crazy. Has anybody ever told you something like that? Not at all. Bro, but I'm telling you right now, the Spirit of God is telling you, come back to me, son. He said, I'm calling out to you, and I've been calling out for a while, for a way so you can actually be warned of what's to come if you don't, if you don't answer the call. Because there's a grace over your life, bro. What's your name again? Ken. Ken, there's a grace over your life, bro. Like I said, outside of the video, bro, your soul, bro, it's eternal. Me, bro, I literally, I, bro, I used to have threesomes. I used to have sex. I used to do psychedelics. I used to burn sage in my apartments, bro. Balance chakras, look at astrology, horoscopes. That was me two years ago. November 2nd would actually be the second year mark of me having a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. I'm saying this, bro, because we don't know the time of day. Like, someone could be riding that scooter and get hit by a car going out 100 miles an hour and they go, they go to the next life. But they're gonna have to face the King of Kings literally one way or another. You're gonna kneel down one or two points of your life willingly right now and serve him and love people how you're called to be or you're gonna go and kneel down to him when it's time of, it's too late. Right. And that's straight up. Right. So bro, why haven't you fully given your life to Jesus? Why would you say that? Uh, shit like, oh my bad. No, you like, good bro, that's the conviction of the Holy Ghost. You feel me? Like uh, like I said, man, you just get caught up in that rustle and bustle of life. Mm -hmm. Really stop going to church like that. Really stop, not saying you gotta go to church for it, but yeah. once you really stop, that's your first step to it. You're not really on it like you it's need It's kinda to like do. your focus is other places. You feel me, basically. Okay. Because bro, I don't, uh, have you ever produced music before? No, sir. Like, played the keys before? No, sir. Bro, I don't know why I really feel like you have that call over your life. I feel like if you naturally pick up the keys, bro, you'll actually be natural at it. And God will supernaturally teach you because you're called to worship Him. And, bro, have you ever heard the gospel explained, like, non-religiously? Like, have you actually heard why it actually saves our souls? All right, bro, I, I break it down like this, bro. You already heard of Adam and Eve, right? Since the beginning, they came, they're supposed to be literally like fullness with God, like face to face walking with God, how we were supposed to be created, literally. So, but they went there, God said, don't eat of this tree. The fruit wasn't bad. The tree wasn't bad, bro. What was bad is that they rebelled against his instructions and did it anyways, right? Excuse me. But so fast forward in the Old Testament, they actually, cause in your, without, in your body, in my body, without blood in our body, would we be alive right now talking? No, not at all. No. So this is where it's crazy, bro. So this is a spiritual realm. The, the spiritual law is blood equals life and sin equals death. So I've lied, have you? Of course. I've had sex outside of marriage, have you? Of course. So that's two out of 10 already. We're right off the rip, we I'm gone. <laughs> we both out of, there. out of there. But this is the good news, bro. Right. That Jesus came not to abol uh, like literally destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Right. He came and never did any of those things, 33 years of, his, of, of, of being on this earth. And it, this is crazy, bro. This is how much he loves us. A divine God came down, took a form of us, bro. Literally looked like us, went through the same temptations and trials to show us how to be a son of God, to show us how to be, how we were originally created, right? And he came, still was persecuted, bro. Do you know that he was whipped 39 times on his back and his spine was exposed for our, our healing? That's crazy, did not. Bro, and then his, there's nails in his wrist, bro, on that cross. The Romans, the Romans literally master crucifixion. They knew how to kill people, to nail them on the cross and kill them. So when he was on there, he had those nails, his lungs were collapsing while he was hanging there. So every time he had to take a breath, he pulled himself up by those nails. His spine scraped the tree. And he did this, he did this for us though, bro. And this, this is where I, like as a brother, bro, I come with correction because it's so important, bro. What we're doing when we live our life the way we want to live it, we're basically saying what you took, what you took, that all that pain, your spine being uh, scraped on a cross, all that pain you did, it's nothing to me. I want to live how I want to live. That's selfish, bro. Like imagine your mom dying for you for like that. Right, right. That's crazy. Like, like think about that, bro. Right. Like, do you do you have any like close cousins or close brothers to you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you think they would die for you like that? Nah. Bro, but Jesus did. Right. And there's proof. Over 500 people literally saw him after he rose from the grave, bro. He's real. So my question is to you: What are you waiting for, bro? Literally, it's it, bro. I thought Christianity was a box of rules. That's why I literally, I told my mom, shut up, keep your Jesus, let me tell you about astrology. And the next That's thing you know, crazy. I'm so serious, bro. But when I got filled with the spirit of God, bro, the power of God, not religion, I got filled with his spirit, a true relationship. I went to my mom weeping, he's real, he's real, he's real. I'm sorry, mom, I'm sorry, he's real. Bro, he's so real. So like, I want, I want you to know, bro, that today could be the last moment, bro. And dude, it's not a box of rules. 
you actually being restored to the person you're created to be. Because he asked you, what's the purpose to life? Do you want me to break it down to you what the purpose to life is? It's to seek the one that created your purpose. That's all it is, bro. It's not money. It's not girls. It's not even coming to Deep Ellen to get a drink, bro. It is literally being the person that God created you to be. Because the heavens and earth will pass away, but we will return to the Father. But there's only one way, bro. Jesus said it. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one gets to the Father but by through me. So this is me, bro. Like, bro, he, he, bro, he literally finds a passion in winning souls. Me too, because we literally got taken out of the pit of hell, bro. And most importantly, reconcile back to God. I knew about your life without even knowing you. That's got to blow your mind a little bit. It's because I didn't know a thing, but the one that knows everything told me. So he's calling out to you, bro. For real. In the middle of deep Ellen, bro. And I want to invite you, bro. I'm not going to force you. Don't worry about things are going wrong, but your, your soul is on the line, bro. I want to invite you into a relationship with Jesus and really saying, God, whatever that looks like, whatever you created me to be, I want to be that. Do you want to do that right now? Let's do it. Alright, so look, repeat after me, brother. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I acknowledge. I acknowledge. I've sinned. I've sinned. And I am a sinner. And I am a sinner. But, but because of your grace. Because of your grace. And your love. And your love. And your unconditional. And your unconditional. Mercy. Mercy. You pulled me out of the pit of hell. You pulled me out of the pit of hell. You died for my sins. You died for my sins. To completely wash me clean. To completely wash me clean. So I invite you into my heart, Lord Jesus. So I invite you to my heart, Lord Jesus. I ask that you fill me with your spirit. I ask that you fill me with your spirit. Restore to me. Restore to me. The destiny you created me to walk in. The destiny you created me to walk in. And call me your son. And call me your son. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Rejoice in heaven. Bro, the Bible says that when one soul is saved, all of heaven rejoices. Do you know also the Bible says that the angels in heaven are a num like the, you can't number them. All of heaven is rejoicing because you made a decision, bro. Not based off of forced religion, but because of an encounter with Jesus Christ. Bro, that's what it takes. But now you have to seek him, bro. I, I would be a liar if I told you everything's going to be all right. Bro, the world's still falling. But you now have the antidote. It's Jesus, bro. I want to pray for you, bro, that he will fill you, that he will encounter you, that, that the truth will live in your heart. And you will be a walking beacon of hope for the people around you in darkness. Do you come in agree with, agreement with that? Let's do it. Lord, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother, Ken. Holy Spirit, right now, I pray that you fill him, Lord. Fill him. Fill him with your Holy Spirit. I come against pride. I come against rebellion. I come against witchcraft. I break every generational curse off of him right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, fill him right now. Fill his mind. Fill his soul. Fill his heart. Is there anybody you need to forgive? They know who they are. I know, but you, the Bible says you cannot be forgiven if you don't forgive. Oh, well, of course. Definitely. So look, I want you to forgive him right now. Definitely. We can we can cut it out on the camera, bro. No, no, you good. don't have to say it, but you're going to say their names so you can really no, do no, it. No, I'm not saying their names. Why not? Me. All right, but can you forgive him, though? Oh, of course. Like, truly, for real, bro. Yeah, definitely. All right, so just say it. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I forgive. I forgive. And I'll say whoever you are, but say it in your heart. I got you. You saying it? Yeah. I've even told him I was working on it. So that's why I'm like, oh, they already know who they are. So, bro, forgiveness and healing are two different things. All right, with it. Forgiving is a choice right now, mm -hmm. but it's the first step to healing. Sure. So you don't have to work on forgiveness. You have to choose to forgive. Mm -hmm. You have to work on healing. I can dig that. It makes sense? Yeah, that's all. That awesome. help you, that free you a little bit? Yeah, yeah. All right, now I'm going to pray for you, all right? Lord, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I ask that you encounter him. Fill his heart, Lord. Fill his heart. Show him the love of the Father. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give him peace. Give him peace. I come against all fear and anxiety. Right now in Jesus, I break rebellion. I break witchcraft right now in Jesus' name. I break religion off of him right now in Jesus' name. I command every unclean spirit to be bound and cast to the abyss. Thank you for the anointing and the calling over his life. I decree and declare that he will walk in purpose. I decree and declare that you will show your love through his heart. I decree and declare that you'll clean his soul. I decree and declare that he will be a light to women and not a burden or not anybody that takes advantage. He will literally walk in your fullness. Thank you for showing them. You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey! Last thing. Do it back. Do it back. Yes. Not often, but sometimes. Some nah. Upper? Nah, it's lower. Lower? Yeah, yeah. My upper back hurt. I don't know. It probably stems from the lower. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just want to pray for your back. Right, for real. Okay. Here, I, you yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I want to pray for, for your real, back. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's Jesus, man. Jesus <laughs> love you, bro. You, you, you now are a son. You've been a son, but now you, you took, you took that, uh, that step. So 
We're going to pray for your back. Uh, I command your back to be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Look at the joy of the Lord is your strength, man. Look, God know how to reach people. So right now, I command all healing. Back spasms in the mighty name of Jesus be healed right now. Thank you, Father God, for healing this back. It's that simple. I don't got to do nothing crazy. I just got to command it. He said in Luke 10, 19 that he gave us a, authority. Jesus love you, man. He love you. No. Mm -hmm. It's not going to hurt no more. Yeah. The, the pain's completely gone. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and it's never gonna come back. I decree that and declare it over your life. You good, man. Hey. Pre appreciate you doing the video. And Jesus hey. love you, man. Hey, one more thing. One more thing. You gotta say, bro. You gotta say this. Say the devil loses. The devil loses. But Jesus wins. But Jesus wins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hey, dab me up, bro. I love you, bro. For real, I love you, bro. Hey, what's your what's your number, bro? Let's stay in touch, though.